All right, folks, we got the Hondu Pilot here. It's the uh, 2011 variety. It's got the big 3.5. This is the one that's got the AAA installed battery. Well, fine job there, AAA. Um, if you haven't seen that short, check it out. I'll put a, a link there. At any rate, the AAA had to come to this guy's house to put in his battery twice because, you know, they said the first battery's defective and then, you know, two days later it died again. And then, you know, it died again, of course. So there's a problem with the vehicle, not the battery. So we need to check to see if this battery has a draw. So I grabbed our uh, meter here and it's been sitting overnight in the shop, but I had a um, power supply on it so it wouldn't be dead this morning when I came in. At least in theory, it shouldn't be dead. Um, I put it on a power supply as opposed to a charger. Charger, did I say that with a mouthful of metal? Um, because my charger, chargers that I have are automatic. And it's, you know, they kick off at a certain point. I didn't want it to kick off and then, you know, battery's half dead when we get here. So we're gonna go right to digital meter. We're gonna make sure our battery is in good shape for the shape it's in. Let's get things hooked up the correct way here. Let's just see what we have for voltage over the limit right now. I'm up, up to a 20 volt scale. And you can see we're at 13.22, so it has a big surface charge on it. Not a big deal. Uh, we're gonna take and unhook this, and we're gonna just uh, go right for the old AMP plant. Of course, the vehicle's been shut off for hours and hours and hours at this point. We're gonna pop out of here and we're gonna to go to uh, low amps. And we'll see if we have any current draw. We, should, we are far past the, the wait time of letting modules time out. Let's see, we're gonna go down here. Oh, you guys can see that, hopefully you can. Get everything zeroed out here. Let's see, put it on the 20 amp scale. All right, so 2.1, three milliamps, four. Try to get this thing where it's gonna level out. We're not looking for draw that low anyways. This is just an initial, oops. Oh, it's over 500 milliamps. This is a big one. You got a big one. 556, 557, 500, over 500 milliamps. So this is a half amp draw. This is a big honker. Um, I wonder, I bet my thermal imager is deader than a doornail because I never use it, so it's probably sitting with a dead battery. Uh, plus the furnace has been blowing on this thing. Uh, so we're looking for a 500 amp draw. That's a big one. That's like two uh, 194 bulbs, say, like two dome lights being on. That's about the equivalent of that. So that's pretty interesting. Um, well, let's come up with our next part of our plan. That was correct. The thermal imager is dead, of course. You know, it's one of those tools you buy where you're like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to use it every day. It's going to be a game changer. And then you get it and it just really sits around the battery. Goes dead. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, we just use it to show our buddies like how bad your windows leak. It is useful. Don't get me wrong, but um, I wish the battery wasn't dead in it. So uh, what we're going to do is what we would typically do is we're going to measure voltage drop across the fuses that are accessible. If there's current flow through a circuit, there will be a, 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 an amount of voltage drop across that fuse. A perfectly good fuse would read zero, 0, 0.00 or you know, 0.1 millivolts. So it's gonna be our baseline is what we expect to see. Um, so I'm just gonna A, go get my glasses so I can see. And then we're gonna go across all those little guys. The ones that we can get to. Um, I don't know what these fuses run. It's quicker to do a, a test across them than it is to see if it's even a likely cause. So we'll just zippy zap across these, touching both ends of the fuse. Probably should get some different probes. Point one, and then I just go to the next one and just work our way down the line until we see a reading other than 0.1, if, if there is. There may not be here. Hey, 
hey, look at that, we're lucky. And it was actually the last fuse we checked. <laughs> so that's handy, let me just double check here. It's always the last one you check, but this is actually the last one and actually physically the last one here. So we have 3.3 millivolts of voltage drop across this fuse, which happens to be, let me figure out how this little thing goes here. Let's go like this and that, this and that and the other thing. It's a 10 amp. And on here it says backup. Let me show you where we're at. <laughs> Back it up. Uh, let's see, we are right here. Uh, number 23 backup. So what the heck's that mean? What's that power? So that has 3.3 uh, millivolts. Now, uh, on the Power Probe website, they have a handy dandy chart where you can actually look up to see, okay, this is a 10 amp fuse and I got 3.3 millivolts of voltage drop across the fuse. What does that equate to in amps? We can look that up or we can put our amp clamp back on and pull the fuse and see if it equals 500 or 400 millivolts. What's up, Mrs. L? Came this year, funny real, with not it? Ooh, funny real, huh? Oh, you've been without your phone all night. Are you in there like this? Did you make it through the night? Is that why I woke up with a nosebleed? <laughs> Could be. You didn't phone, have your Insta. Phone withdrawal. Or the Facebook. All right, let's see your funny reel, Mrs. O. <laughs> <sighs> let's see here, folks. We're going to back out of here. Uh, we're going to go back to the low amps. I'll see if I can remember if I'm editing this video and I hear myself talking. I'll put a link to that power probe. Uh, chart their fuse voltage drop chart and it depends on fuse type you know is it a maxi fuse a mini fuse a jk's fuse what the voltage drop should be or it what it equates to this isn't going to be very accurate because my jaws don't clamp on here very good there we go so there's that let me grab a pair of uh, pliers here now we're going to go over to this backup fuse we're steadied out there about 484 we're going to pull this little guy out. Do we fix the car? Pretty much, I would say. At this point, I don't like the accuracy of, of current clamps. If we're down below 100 millivolts, I would rather have my meter in line. But clearly, we found the big one, the massive draw. Uh, these things tend to drift and like I say, once you're down in the uh, low milliamps range, they're, they're not highly accurate. But we can clearly see that this fuse is the offender or this circuit is the offender. Let's put it back in. Boom. And our draw's back and it's not really any higher than it was. So it doesn't turn on a module and wake it up and go through a whole rigmarole. Uh, next thing, uh, power distribution diagram. We'll see, we'll find that backup fuse and see see what we see. We'll see what the powers. Um, we're not looking for a short. We're not looking for an open. Uh, if we had an open, what would happen? Let's think about that for a minute. Wires back there, runs off this, and it's caught, it's hanging in outer space. We would see this. We'd see absolutely nothing uh, because it's the same as taking the fuse out. If it was shorted, what would we see for current draw? You'd see this right here, absolutely nothing. Why? Because it blow the fuse. So no shorts, no opens. That's not what we're looking for. Uh, we're probably looking for, you know, a failed component that that thing powers or a, a component that's not turning off for some other reason. But instead of sitting here talking about it, let's get after it, boys. What's she grinding up in here? What are you doing? Coming to use the computer. Who's See what you're grinding up. <laughs> With your camera? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. So here we go, folks. Uh, fuse 23 in the underhood fuse box. Comes down. Pink wire goes to the under dash fuse relay box. 
with the Mick U. And this is not back up like back it up. This is a back up like keep the power going. Um, and we go to some multiple units, which stinks. Uh, mobilizer keyless control unit. Power window master switch. Power mirror control unit, however, if it only has this DPMS, which is, um, I have to Google search it. Driving position memory system. So it's your memory seat. I don't know if it has that. I'm not always familiar with all the acronyms. Uh, this one does not have navigation. I'll double check, I don't believe it does. So it goes to audio HVAC display unit, goes to the DLC, so maybe he's got something plugged into that. Gauge control module and then to page 1018, number M. Let's see what's on page 1018, number M, letter M. Uh, comes down here, not used, without AC inverter. Power tailgate control unit, power seat control unit. Oh, DPMS power tailgate. See, I don't know if this applies. Rear controller and screen, and then not used. Awesome. So it only feeds like, you know, a few things. So let's print this out. Uh, before we come out, I am going to look for a silver bullet here on the Identifix to see if somebody else has come across this. And if they have, hooray. It might shortcut our process. We'll just check here real quick. We'll type in Fuse 23. We're always in the market for silver bullets. There's a parasitic draw in Fuse 23. Look at this. Ha! <laughs> this might shortcut our case here. Check that all the door locks work. This guy writes, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Let's go see what the fix was. Unplug door lock switch draw immediately drops. Okay. Driver's door lock switch would stick. Okay. So this might be a good tip. Um, this guy had a problem. A couple guys had problems with rear hatch glass switches, rear tailgate latches. Uh, would only draw when security system was armed. Spent a full day tracking down everything from Fuse 23. Ended up being the rear glass release button was inoperative. Drawn 450 milliamps. So these are all things that once we've identified our problem on Fuse 23 of a 0.3 amp draw, which is what we have, a lot of people don't like to admit this, but we're gonna use this program uh, because sometimes it's really helpful. See you later, Miss Bell. Been Bye. talking with you. So the way that program can become a problem though, let me tell you, is when you don't do anything. When you go up there and you get on the Identifix and you say, what's wrong with my car? And then you just start flinging parts at this thing. So let's just take some of their advice. Is our door lock switch stuck? That appears to function to all the door locks function. They appear to. Let me see if this one's working. That one's working. Yeah, they seem to, they seem to function. And then let's just make sure by fiddling with this stuff that we haven't, uh, you know, inadvertently repaired it. Anybody who says they have Identifix and doesn't use it for a silver bullet here and there is a liar, liar, pants on fire. So let's just see where we're at here. Oops, get this flipped back around. I guess I flipped around too many times. And let's see, so we're still at our 450. So, okay, let's come up with our plan here and see what we can do. So I am curious one thing. Let me grab the keys here. Uh, I got them. Let's see if the horn blows when we lock it because it's going to tell us how the door switches work. Okay, so that likely means all of the door switches function as they should. Um, if it was missing an input saying, hey, I'm closed, typically it won't blow the horn. Um, the other thing I got to look is I never checked. I don't think, I don't think these hot dudes have a hood switch. I just want to make sure I'm not burning myself here. No, I don't see wires coming out of the latch, and uh, I don't see any, you know, push down dongies to say, hey, I'm the hood, I'm open. Um, one guy commented on there that his rear glass did not function. Let's make sure our doors are locked, and they are. 
gate is unlocked. Let's see if our glass works. Oh. No, no functioning. And I believe he stated that he unplugged the rear switch and his draw went away. Oh, what do we do, folks? Do we chase it that down? I think it only takes a second to pull these panels off. It might save us a lot of time or it might waste us some time. I believe it. That's it. I believe I can buy. And through the magic of modern television. Ew. Let me get it in here. You got some nasty, nasty spray on that. Uh, let's see. I don't know who's who, but all these wires, they all go out to that little guy, so let's just unplug everything. And then, uh, let's see here. Unplug that one. Little fingers ain't working real good this morning. Unplug that one, and that's everything that goes out there. So that's probably the backup camera too. Let's go have a look, see if anything changed. Uh, let's just set our stuff here and close the gate and wait a minute. So I shut it off and then I hit the door lock button just to make sure that it, you know, what we unplugged wasn't any anything to do with that circuit. And it's, it's only been like 45 seconds, but we'll see if, uh... boom. We fixed it. <laughs> we don't we even have to trace it, huh? Look at that. How's that for a silver bullet for you? Let's see. So we are zeroed out. And at this point, we would check it with going in line, but it looks like about 50 milliamps. We can make sure our meter is accurate by just turning on some marker lights. Well, yep. So our meter is accurate. And anytime you put a big draw on your current probe, always take it off and reset it because it'll always make it drift a, a certain amount. It's probably not the correct terminology, but when you're dealing with low current draws, they're not very accurate. However, what is accurate is the fact that we're missing our, you know, half an amp draw that we had. Hooray! Let's find out which one of those wires actually goes to the glass button and see if we can just disable that single wire. Not gonna lie, I feel cheap. I feel dirty. Why? I feel like I've sinned. Because <laughs> we just took a silver bullet. We didn't use our brain at all. Uh oh. Yeah. Mm. Just kind of feel cheap. Not gonna lie. Wow. Yeah. No skill No. No, I just feel like this. I gotta go rinse my mouth out or something. Looks like there's a couple components to the system, so there it look, appears to be a uh, hatch glass latch switch. So this is gonna be a confirmation switch. Is, am I open or am I closed? Hatch glass opener switch, so I assume that's gonna be our push button. And that comes back up here to the MICU under the dash, so this is the, the brain box. And then um, it looks like driver's door hatch glass opener switch so there might be a switch there also let me call the customer first see if he wants any of this functioning or if he just wants it disabled well unfortunately folks the guy uh, doesn't want us to go any further just wants to draw fixed and that's it so we're going to plug this one back in which is this for the backup camera which I don't think worked anyways I think it says so and then this one here with two black wires the green and light blue that's for the hatch switch button and then for the hatch latch confirmation, which is gonna come from, you know, this up here. So, I guess show's over, folks. Gosh, I feel dirty. It's a really great platform, but boy, it, it's probably the most abused platform. We're gonna have to give this a little bit of time here. Um, there it goes, it just went down. I'm gonna switch over to our regular leads. Um, and then we're gonna fix, or yeah, we're gonna fix, we're gonna measure where our battery current draw is. I'm not gonna try to sit here and make excuses for myself. <clears throat> but, you have a parking lot full of cars and you just want to kind of get on with your day sometimes it's pretty helpful that once you've identified your problem to have 
somebody posts a fix, especially in a case like this where it can, you know, it can take some time. We're gonna go to Amps Internal. Let's grab a 10 mil. It's 10. We're gonna loosen that little fella up. Without disconnecting it, we're gonna try to weasel it up here a little bit. We're gonna hook our negative lead to the battery post. And then we're gonna hook our other negative lead or our positive lead here to the battery cable. And we're gonna see how much current's going through it. So now this is a perfectly accurate measurement. So 60 milliamps. I'm gonna give this some time, make sure everything uh, powers off and everybody's happy inside the car. And then we'll check and see what it is here in about 20 minutes, half hour. It's been a while folks. Look at that pattern coming across the screen, kind of neat, huh? Uh, we're averaging out about 33 millivolts. But you'll watch that pattern. We'll have a high current draw, another one, and it's gonna start separating into a high current draw and a low current draw. And I say high, I mean, I'm just using that phrase loosely. But what you have there is you have a couple LED lights coming on inside the vehicle that are not perfectly in sync. So when both lights turn on simultaneously, which they will here shortly, you start getting a you know big spike per se. You'll see here when they all come together, then I'll go inside and show you kind of what's happening. So there you go, there they are combined together. And this is a very typical normal pattern as you'll see, but we look inside the vehicle, we're gonna see an LED light flash in there. And then we have also have one over here on the radio and if we sit back, we can watch them, you know, as they synchronize or as they're out of sync, blinking away there. And then just those LEDs turning on is also reflected, you know, in our scope here. But being that we're, you know, sitting around 30 milliamps, I'm totally fine with it. Um, usually anything under 50, I'm pretty happy with. Most cars sit in the low 20s. Um, but without having a known good, I'm happy with this thing sitting in the 30 milliamp range. I don't know what the reserve capacity, our reserve capacity is 120 on this battery. So this thing's gonna go for an awful long time with a 30 milliamp draw. I feel like I have to explain myself again. <laughs> you caught me, we cheated, but it worked. However, we had a little different process other than just going in there to load up silver bullets into our parts cannon and start unloading we identified the draw and then we identified the exact branch that the draw was on then we looked for somebody else who has already paved the way for us and somebody else did they took the paving machine they loaded it up with yellow bricks and they made us a path right back to the answer which was great because it saved us a bunch of time had that not worked we would have lost 10 minutes of time and we would have just had gone back to our roots and start breaking that system down. We would have probably got a scan tool. We would have looked at door switch inputs, gate inputs. You know, is anybody that we can see quick and easy staying on? If all that looks okay, we're going on to the next module. You know, what's going on with the mirrors? Is there anything we can unplug? You know, can we start disabling things? And that's the approach we would have had until we got to the answer, which eventually we would have, but we might have had several hours into it depending on at what point we came across the problem. So use those programs sparingly, use them wisely, I guess I would say. We work for a host of other shops, as you guys see, they, they bring us cars all the time and several of those shops have Identifix. And you can always tell because the car comes in with, you know, X symptom, you know, fill in the blank, you know, runs rough, whatever, parasitic draw. And here's their list of parts. A, B, C, D, E, they just, you know, they got a checklist. Here's everything we changed. This car still broke. 95% of the time, you can take that checklist, you hold it up next to Identifix under their symptom, part one, part two, part three, part four, and then they got to the part where this guy down here, part you know, five, he replaced the computer, so they brought it to us to put a computer in it. We see it day after day after day. It's just super, super common. Lots of time, lots of money wasted, just guessing based off somebody else's repair. So look at it, use it wisely. It can be a very valuable tool. I'll leave it at that. And don't you be a tool and you go in that comment section, questions, comments, concerns, Insta, Facebook. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.